just in terms of what you're seeing now in the price action, what are you hearing on the ground? Are we at a top? Are, is there still a lot of bullish sentiment out there? Yeah, so as you say, we've actually had our LME uh, seminar today, uh, and uh, it's really been a, a source of discussion. Uh, obviously, as your graph showed, so, some good price action today. Like, I think there's there's a short term and a medium term story here. You know, in the short term, uh, the metals prices, like many of the commodities, are being impacted by a number of transient factors. Uh, you have energy, you have logistics, uh, you have short term supply disruption, uh, and I think a lot of the price movements we, we've been seeing up and down are a consequence of that. But, but it's also undeniable that if we look at where we came from, uh, from the, the depths of the pandemic, there has been this this very you know, this longer term trend, and I think exactly as you say, that is driven by the longer term supply story, i.e., that it's hard to bring new supply online, and the demand side, particularly uh, the green revolution and the need for these metals in a more electric society. The needs of these metals in an electric society is certainly something that, that a lot of people are talking about, Matthew. But the focus, it feels, and I know you guys have been discussing this as well, is trying to ensure that as we make this energy transition, the metals we're using fit the narrative, that they've not come from dirty mines, that they've not come from uh, mines that are using non-sustainable energy. You guys are starting to, to move in this direction. So we've got this Metal Hub transaction taking place. How much demand is there for that kind of transparency within the supply chain in the metal market? Yeah, I, I think transparency is absolutely crucial here. You know, we at the LME have been grappling with this question because exactly as you say, metals can't expect to be part of the solution unless we can show that metals themselves are sourced in a responsible and a sustainable manner. So if we take a look at aluminum, like on, on your graph here, we know that a lot of aluminum is produced from low carbon power sources, but a lot is also produced from high carbon power sources. So there have been calls for us to exclude high carbon production, but we don't think that's the right thing to do because then there simply wouldn't be enough aluminum on the market. And that graph you're showing would be even significantly um, more upwardly inclined. So what we want to do is to bring transparency and to have a world where there is disclosure uh, of the metal that's traded on our exchange. So if, if you take delivery or you trade metal, you can go and get data about the sustainability characteristics of that metal, be that environmental, be that social, uh, be it the, the provenance story, uh, mm -hmm. and ensure that you are comfortable with the metal that is in your supply chain. Matthew, how much more of a premium will those buyers pay for that green aluminum? Yeah, well, th that's a great question. And I don't think anybody really knows. I and mean, if, if you talk in the market and say, what's the green premium for, for aluminum? Normally people will say kind of about $10 a ton, but that's very much a finger in the air number. The, the uh, deal that we've announced today, which is a, a partnership uh, with Metals Hub, which is a spot trading platform, it facilitates the spot trading of specific commodities, is really the first step in helping to answer that question. Because what we foresee is a world where you have the LME to deal with your high-level hedging, uh, you're hedging your, your, your broad costs of metal. But there is a more digital way where you can then go and source specific parcels of metal with specific sustainability characteristics like low carbon. And what we can then do together with our partners at Metals Hub is to produce real transaction data that actually answers your question uh, with, with real numbers. Yeah. Matt, can you ever see a situation where there's dirty aluminium and you have to say, no, that's not part of our business anymore? Yeah, great question. So certainly that's what we have done for the human rights elements. So we have already put in place rules that say that if your metal uh, is using child labor or is supporting conflict finance, then we're sorry, but you can't be on our market. And that's because those issues are binary. The world has decided that those are bad things and we're able to put that into our rules. Now, right now, as we know, carbon 
it, it's more of a spectrum. People have different views on the carbon footprint of their product, mm -hmm. and that's why we believe that disclosure and user choice is the right way to deal with it. But look, in five or 10 years' time, yeah. could we see a future where you could only have lower carbon? Yeah, I, I certainly think the world could end up there. Hey, Matt, quickly, about 30 seconds left. Do you expect liquidity to then be drained on your typical aluminum contract and go towards the more green one? So, so that, that's a really important question. And that's why we haven't split the current contract because we do think that would drain liquidity. We're going to use the spot trading platform to build that interest on low carbon. And then maybe we bring that back to the, to the main market when the demand is there.